Hi guys, this is Nupsource playing Transport Fever again. Uh, we are doing the American campaign. This will be mission 7, the final mission of the American campaign. And uh, not to worry, I'll also be doing the European campaign afterwards. But for now, we are going into space. Business is brisk high in the skies. The invention of the jet engine has revolutionized aviation. Civil aviation is experiencing an unprecedented boom. Travelers can reach even remote destinations by plane. The train has had its day as a mode of passenger transport. Despite large distances becoming even easier to cross, certain places are inaccessible. The Iron Curtain separates East from West. The great powers have divided the entire world among themselves. Now all that remains to conquer are the skies. Before the Russians do, let's reach for the stars. We find ourselves in the Pacific Northwest and the 50s are drawing to a close. Our airline is not yet bankrupt, but it will be soon if we don't do something fast. The planes are hopelessly outdated and their capacities are far too small. If we want to remain competitive, we'll most likely have to renew our entire fleet. If that doesn't help, we'll be left with little choice than to search for new business opportunities. The main thing is that it's something where those eco-fundamentalists don't keep getting in our way. They're spreading like rabbits. Okay. Um, so like always, uh, the aim for this playthrough is to win all five achievement medals here. So let's just take a look. Moon landing, finish the entire mission uh, before 1970. So we have uh, just under 15 years to do it. Own more than 100 million. Um, yeah, make a lot of money. Ensure a successful conference. Uh, yeah, at some point there will be a conference, make sure that enough, enough people get there. Avoid the highlighted nature reserves with all land vehicles. So let us zoom out here. There's some big circles here. And apparently no truck or bus can enter those areas. Well then, airsick, too much training, never hurt anyone. Complete more than 30 parabolic flights. Uh, that one will be explain itself later. Uh, but they're not particularly hard to do all of these. Uh, the timing. Uh, getting the mission done between. Uh, getting the mission done before 1970. And having enough time to do 30 parabolic flights uh, is the issue in this mission. But let's get the mission started. Well, oh, maybe I'll oh, just take a look at the map first. As it says, we're on the Pacific Northwest. We are on the border between the US and Canada, as far as I can tell. We have Seattle here. And then we have Victoria. And then we have Vancouver. And all three cities have a hub. An airport, and all three of them have water access if needed. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what would be the northwest, east, south direction on this map. I don't know that much about about the American geography. Um, but what do we start out with is having. One line of three planes, and they have a circular route in Seattle, Victoria, Vancouver, Seattle. Uh, and I'll probably want to split that into three different lines so people can go from Seattle to Vancouver and back direct instead of all this mosing around. Um, we also have a 50 million loan at the beginning of the mission. Might as well just put in my logo. Uh, and as in the other missions, if I run out of money, there will be two smaller loans that can be achieved or 
uh, cashed in without uh, breaking any missions. Uh, and the loan should not be counted in the 100 million. I think it's 100 million cash. Wait, okay, let's get started. The Douglas DC-4 is pretty, but it's far too sluggish. Our friends at the Boeing Aircraft Company are hard at work on jet aircraft for passenger aviation, but they're still not quite there. However, there is an alternative. A completely new kind of aircraft entered the market recently. The Comet, the first ever jet airliner, reduces previous journey times by half. It is built by the British, but let's not nitpick. <laughs> ah, the, those Europeans don't know how to do stuff. Ah. Yeah, so that's a simple mission. Just replace those three planes. Uh, first, though, I'll divide the, this line into three different. How much it will cost to upgrade them? To Haviland Comet One. Eleven million. I only have fifty million to start, so that's that's pretty easy. What are they doing with that? Let's take a more detailed look at the map. Here in Seattle we have a plastics factory. Then we have a building site, a mission site. We have a tool factory. Machine and tool factory. We have a construction materials plant, I just call it the brick factory. Uh, and we have a coal mine and an oil well. And going north, or whatever the direction this is, we have a steel mill, an oil refinery, a stone quarry, and on the other side of the water here we have an iron mine. So plenty of resources that we'll be working with pretty soon. I already hear the sound of it yet. Um, to have this uh, plane make money, I'll also need to put in a bus route because these airports are quite uh, far away from town. So I think I'll just get started on that. The British just cannot be trusted. The comet has broken its promises. In fact, it's broken in general and has fallen from the sky in pieces after just a short time. We were able to make makeshift repairs to the things, but now word of the accidents has spread. Not exactly the best advertisement for us. We should look for alternatives. It'd be good to acquire an interest in the Boeing Aircraft Company, so we're soon in possession of better planes. There are some interesting developments underway at Boeing. A new production facility is to be built. What will be produced there, however, is still a secret. If we offer our services in construction, perhaps we'll find out more. Yeah, what is this? This British aircraft doesn't work. Uh, so they actually took a bit of history here because uh, some of the comets had problems with uh, with windows breaking, and you don't want a window to break at thirty thousand feet. Uh, Um, 
So the next mission, deliver construction material to the new production facility. That's this building site I mentioned just outside Seattle. Um, and it's a pretty easy string here. Get some stone, have it converted to bricks, deliver the bricks here. And we only need to deliver 101 bricks. Uh, so it's not something that needs a train line. It'll just be a nice and simple truck line doing that. Um, so I set, set up, set that up, and I'll set up a bus route in each of the three towns. Maybe a tram. And since I don't need these comets, I might as well downgrade them to something not quite as expensive, but equally effective. Seven million back from each plane. That's good. You might hear some some noise, background noise on the microphone here. That's because there's a roadworks going on outside my house. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully it's so low that it will filter fill out. No. But on the other hand, I'm also doing roadworks here. It's not uh, particularly good at these multiple pairings. Let's sort this out. Uh, what I'm basically doing here is making two routes out of one. So it goes from the airport, does one half of the city, goes back to the airport, and does the other half of the city. Uh, So that was the free city trim sorted. Now it's the stone to brick conversion. Okay, so now I have a uh, first goods line. It's ready to pick up stone here. Take it over here to the construction plant. Immediately take it over to uh, the building site. At the moment, we'll just be waiting for the industry to pick up. Just did. So we just need to put some more wheels on the line. It'll neatly take care of itself. My trams have started rolling around. Let's soon pick up passengers as well. Here's our new plane. Lucky it's super constellation. 
find that it's quite an odd design. Apparently that's what you need to do to make a long range, long range uh, triple prop plane rather than a jet plane. The first train passengers are also waiting. So hopefully there will be pa airplane passengers waiting as soon as well. Second terminal because all the airports have two lines. I guess the first passenger going from Victoria to Seattle. He'll be going on that plane. Thirteen people waiting. That's already quite well. Yeah, I double tried all of these roads because it's very likely that I'll be running more than one route on, on the road at once. So, uh, if at all possible, I'll have the routes be on the several tracks. On the We've road. been able to acquire some shares in the Boeing aircraft company, and now also know what's being produced in the secret production facility. It concerns nothing less than the conquest of space. And it's about time, too. The Russians have already launched several satellites into space, one of them even with a dog on board. In order for the U.S. to keep up with the exploration of the infinite expanses, the World Fair in Seattle is dedicated completely to space exploration. Leading rocket scientists will gather at a congress during the expo, and we have the honor of bringing the lady and gentleman scientists to their quarters. Bring 100 people to the conference center over the next 1,095 days. And because I had the game running, I already had a month go by. So the conference is held at this place in the middle of nowhere. So they build a hotel up here without even having a road. So we need to put a road in and a transportation system. Uh, and it's quite on the hilltop here. Uh, I guess it would. Looks like it will be a slightly shallower curve if I go down through the forest than if I go down this this valley. Well, I need to go outside of the circle as well. Yeah, and then I need to set up a line and ship passengers from Seattle and then Seattle Airport up to the conference center. Um, so let's put in some rope. Buses that go from Seattle to the conference center. And they will need to space out and they will need to pick up some passengers. I could have picked a faster bigger truck for this route uh, by buying the Studebaker. But the Studebaker is a specialized truck that has three different variants and you can transport stone and construction materials on the same. So we need to set up two different lines. So it's a trade-off because this vehicle makes less money and it's less efficient. 
but then it's more efficient because it takes cuts both ways most of most of the way, so to say. Ooh, sixteen people are already going to the conference. Aircraft company, we will develop the rockets that will take the first men to the moon. As long as the Russians don't get there before us. They've already sent the first man into orbit and, unlike the dog, brought him back alive as well. The rocket prototypes need to be ready for use as soon as possible so that we can finally put an American into orbit in space too. Let's help in obtaining the necessary measuring equipment for the testing facility. Okay, so now the goal have changed. And it says deliver machines to Boeing's production facility. So it's the same place, but now it's uh, machines that need to be delivered here. So uh, that means I could either just scrap the entire brake line or change its target to deliver into Seattle. And since one of the medals is about making money, I should probably just redirect it. Uh, so I need to find the industrial area of Seattle. That might be a train stop, but that would be a very nice stop. Okay, so make one here. Yeah, that will also be a nice place to go. So, deliver there, don't deliver here. And then now just keep running. Now, the new mission was to get Machines over here. Machines are produced here and they need steel and plastic or steel and planks. And there's no uh, lumber yard on this map, so I need to do it by plastic. So we need to get the rest of the industries working. Need iron to go from here, uh, from the iron mine here on the other side of the water, to the steel mill, coal going from the coal mine, the coal mine down here up to the steel mill. I need oil to go here from the uh, oil well down here up to the refinery, and then get uh, oil from there to the plastics factory, and then the plastics back here. Uh, so it'll be a while to set up, a little while to pick up. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I extended the roads, because I'm going to need the ability to have, to have a lot of trucks going around here. So let's get building. Um, here to get the iron, I could either transport it all the way down to Seattle and then all on the way up to the steel mill. It would just be so much easier to ship it by ship across the water. I guess I have 
all the depots and truck stops I need at the moment. It's time to start up the different supply lines. First, coal. Let's go from down there. Delivered at the steel mill. Then I'll be able to take slag back from the steel mill and deposit it at the bricks factory and then continue and get some more coal. That's something that can be done with the Studebaker. Both coal and slag can be done in the same way. As you can see, because the road is double tracked, if you put the truck stops on the opposite sides of the road, it will be much easier to have the lines separate onto the different tracks of the road. That should take care of all the supplies needed. So we just need another line to send the machines. To the rubber picture. So when that picks up I'll need to Look at those lines repeatedly and put on more vehicles. But let's take a look at the conference. Outstanding! All the scientists made it to the Congress. The exchange was very enlightening and has advanced our nation in the space race. Yep, so it took about 500 days to get all the scientists to the Congress. So that's the first medal in the bag. Uh, I need to make money, I need to be fast, I need to do parabolic flights. And the eagle friend is pretty easy, I just have to stay out of those areas. Uh, this bus route will have to be demolished pretty soon. Because the Congress will not keep spawning passengers. But I'm pretty sure that these airlines, well, two of them are making money now. But I think they'll be doing better if they had better frequency. So I'll just put another airline, yeah, plane on each airline. Seattle, Vancouver, Victoria. And Seattle, Victoria. I just realized that now that I have line taking slack to the brick factory as well as the stone uh, then the vehicles on the trucks that are on the stone line will not be enough to carry the bricks so I'll need to separate that line into two separate Of that, the stone line can now be upgraded to Studebaker's. 
because they have only burning stone and not bricks anymore. I just add another ship for increased frequency. At some point, the iron mine will ramp up and make more iron per year. Anyway, so it'll probably be needed at some point. Say, wow, well, the hotel is still working. I didn't expect that. But it does seem that I have maybe a couple. There's just too many on the route. But it's making money. Uh, we just had a honk honk because now the proper comet has been launched. And it's only half the price. It's called Comet 4B now instead. Um, so I could upgrade to that. At least for the Vancouver line because that's that's a long one. It does say it has that you have the same frequency. But let's see. Comets. <laughs> it might be quite a long way from Seattle to Vancouver, but the comet did not reach its top speed. The takeoff and landing procedures uh, take out so many kilometers that it's really hard to use these jet, uh, jet planes into transport fever. The rocket tests are proceeding very satisfactorily, and that thanks to our help. However, before we conquer the moon, more extensive tests are required that are too dangerous, too elaborate, and too expensive for human pilots to undertake. Therefore, NASA has been training chimpanzees for some time to selflessly perform their duty for our great nation. As they cannot eat bananas in space, they have to get used to their new food. Okay, so we got a new mini mission. So up here in Vancouver, there's a building called the Zoological Zoolo Institute at an East Green. Only 20 of them, but yeah. Uh, up here we have a farm that can produce grain. We have a food plant that can make it into food. But it's not food that's needed. So basically we can set up a line that takes the 20 grain into this institute when that's done we can convert it so it makes food into and takes it into Vancouver let's get started and as usual grain and food cannot be stored in the same Studebaker. So I'll use forward model 77 for this. Okay, 
It seems that the comet only increased the frequency a little bit. But the much higher speed definitely increased the the income. So we might as well convert the other two lines to jets. Fuel mixture will be found real soon now. In order for the lunar mission astronauts to become accustomed to a state of weightlessness in advance, this needs to be simulated. Here's how. A suitable aircraft shoots up at a steep angle and high speed, and then back down again at a similarly steep angle. Our friends at Boeing have designed a special plane for this. They've lovingly nicknamed it the Vomit Comet, for whatever reason. <laughs> for whatever reason. Yeah. So this is what the... Uh parabolic flights are about. It's the zero gravity training for all the astronauts. Um, and because if you have a mission to make 30 of them in quite a short amount of time, uh, what I want to try is setting up a, a separate airport just for the Vomit Comet. I need to find somewhere flat to put it. I don't say that it had to be connected to anything. This will be, this will be our way 51. And it says, set up a line with a single airport as a stop and assign the vomit comet. And the NASA vomit comet is a variant of the comet, uh, which is very expensive, 19 million, capacity of one passenger, so it can't be used for anything interesting money-wise, uh, it all, at least it doesn't cost that much to run, only 10,000 a year instead of the 1 million per year, so all the money I earn will be put into make more of these because I think it'll count if I have more of them and an airport can take maybe 10 airports a year, 10 takeoffs from between 5 and 10 takeoffs per year uh, so if I can find the money I should just pour them on this moment comment line I hope that'll work So I can afford, uh, afford one, I can afford two. And then I think I'll need to trigger my loan, extra loans. Oh, not enough money. The money is slipping through our fingers, people. We'll soon be bankrupt. But if we're prepared to grovel on our hands and knees, our financiers will grant us a bridge loan. Yes, another 20 million. So I can sell that one, sell that one, and buy another comet. Good gracious, we're spending money like there's no tomorrow. Just this once, our financial backers are willing to turn a blind eye and help us out once again. But this is definitely the last time. Yes. Well, a million. So we just had enough for number four. So 
let's see how it goes. This aircraft 7 is the first of the Bombard Comets that I bought. So it just track how oh, that flies. So I got one parabolic flight from the first plane. And I got a second parabolic flight from the second plane. That's all good. So the concept ups work. Just floating around here. I think there would be room for just one more. As soon as I get to 19 million. Nah. If we get to 25 million. I'll put on another one. Let's see what goes on down here. Plenty of goods. Yeah, it says perform pair product lines. The quest said to do five, but the metal says to do 30, so I'll just let it keep running. Uh, but for now, I'll just tweak, uh, trim. <laughs> yeah, we can trim these uh, ghost lines to have the right amount of wheels. So. Very soon, the first American will be setting foot on the moon while the Russians are kicking themselves down on Earth. To make the Saturn V rockets we've co-developed even more efficient, the fuel mixture needs to be optimized. Let's help our friends in the production facility and deliver the fuel supplies they require for their experiments. Deliver fuel to Boeing's production facility. So now we put a Saturn rocket on the ramp. Which means we're almost ready for a lift off to the moon. But we need to have 102 fuel units. And we already have set up the oil to the the crude oil to the refinery. So we seem to already have some fuel produced here, so it'll be quite easy. Because the line we have already could take the fuel down to the stuff as it already does. But for the moment, it's doing that because there's a building here that would like some fuel.
<laughs> it is oversupplied in few words. 200%. Okay. Um, so it will be really easy to just let the line that's currently taking machines from the factory to the rocket side be changed into uh, liquid wagons. Uh, but then we will have fueled the rocket and mission would end. And we still need to do those 30 parabolic flights. So for now I'll just change the machines line to deliver machines into Seattle. So we can keep keep the production up and keep the money roll money rolling. So instead of stopping at Seattle Annex, stop at Fifth Street. I just keep going as it as it's used to. And then I'll set up a few line very soon. Actually I can set it up now. And just not put a vehicle on it yet. So wait here for fuel, deliver it here. That's really too good when we need it. Are we gonna fall another one? Mm. Vomit commit. So there are five of them. Okay, uh, I don't have a count of how many parabolic flights have been done, because the counter disappeared at 5. But the way it goes, it should hit the 30 mark pretty soon. So I think I'll put one car on my fuel line just to start it up. There we go. Too much training, never hurt anyone. Complete more than 30 parabolic flights. But that also means that we don't need these four planes. I used to have five, but it's a while. Just to smoothen, smoothen the wait time. Um, I don't need these anymore. So go sell. Which pretty soon will let me 80 million, something similar to that, like that. Uh, I may have borrowed 80 million, but just the fact that I still have them in cash counts. Uh, now I just need to have a lot of fuel. All the fuel we need for the for this final mission is already in, in the station here. So it's just a question of putting tankers on this line.
start dropping in. The time has come. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. America is ready to set foot on the moon, and we've made that possible. Start the rocket. Wah, three, two, one. And then we have liftoff. So that's how you do that. It's not that complicated. Before 1970, we still had three and a half years to go. We have plenty of money, although uh, we only have a net worth of 75 million. Uh, we have 100, more than 100 million in cash. Uh, it took half the, a lot of time to get to the conference. Uh, I completely ignored the nature reserves and I did 30 parabolic flights. Uh, that's it for for the American campaign. Uh, seven missions, five medals each, 35 medals in total. Um, so next week I'll return and I'll start up on the European campaign that also has seven missions. Well, un until then, have fun, and uh, if you haven't already, please try and play this fantastic game. Bye-bye.